While Formula 1's 2021 cars will feature a lot of carryover from last year, the changes that are being made have huge potential to mix things up. Some of those new elements will be part of general season-on-season -season improvement, but it's the new floor rules that could yet play a decisive role in swinging the competitive order around. And there is a potentially interesting scenario playing out where the tweaks to the floor, part of a raft of changes aimed at cutting downforce by 10%, could favour either the Mercedes or Red Bull concept. What appeared to be initially an innocuous change to the floor area ahead of the rear tyre has actually manifested itself as something quite significant. Andy Green, the technical director of the renamed Aston Martin squad, said after evaluating the impact of the new floor last year, it's a huge change, believe it or not. A small change, relatively speaking, to the floor has had quite a significant impact on the performance of the car. It's not just a redevelopment of the floor, unfortunately, it's a redevelopment almost of the front-to-back aerodynamics of the car to try and recover it. Given Red Bull's high rake arrangement, the initial thought was that it could come off worse because of the new floors. However, others argue that Mercedes could actually be the ones hurt most from the new arrangement. Let's take a look at what's at stake and how it could impact both teams. Firstly, it's key to understand what's changing. The interim regulations implemented by the FIA were a means of countering the downforce that's been added by teams since the regulations were changed in 2019. Now, the FIA's initial gambit was to create a diagonal cutout in the floor ahead of the rear tyre. But the data accumulated during the first few races of the season proved that this alone would result in them falling some way short of their 10% downforce reduction target. As such, the governing body swiftly followed this up by announcing further changes, a reduction in the width of the rear braked up winglet, and a height reduction for the diffuser strakes. Not content with this, or perhaps having realised that the designs that might emerge as a consequence of leaving things as they were, the FIA made another alteration at the 11th hour, preventing the use of fully enclosed holes in the floor. Meanwhile, Pirelli made a U-turn too, and elected to develop a revised tyre. This will not only handle the demands placed upon the tyres more effectively, but also allow the Italian tyre manufacturer to prescribe lower minimum starting pressures for the coming season. Now, this is crucial as it means that the teams not only have new rules to focus on, they also have to deal with a revised tyre construction. This increases the aerodynamic challenge significantly as they now have a relatively unknown variable in the middle of all the other technical changes. Now, this is a battle that aerodynamicists have been tackling for decades, but one which has certainly seemed to take centre stage as the teams find gains with tiny tweaks. While it's easy to think about how the rear tyre behaves in the centre of this storm, there's also the front tyre to consider. As the tyre deforms, that means any flow structure created to deal with the turbulence it generates will also have to be tuned to recover that performance. This means that teams will not only have to make alterations to the parts directly affected by the regulation changes, but pretty much every other aerodynamic surface on the car as they put together any aerodynamic connections that have been severed by the regulation changes and new tyres. So how does that affect the rake? Now, first off, the term rake is used to describe the nose-down attitude of the car, the incline, and is perhaps widely associated with Red Bull and its lineage of cars since 2009. Now, other teams have adopted it too, as if the conditions are right, a car designed with higher rake angle will be able to generate more downforce from the floor and diffuser than one at a lower angle. This is down to the additional volume that's created between the underside of the floor and diffuser and the ground. But if you can't effectively seal the edge of this volume, you'll lose any potential downforce that can be generated and start to have some unwanted side effects too. This is likely why there was a belief that Red Bull would suffer the most when it comes to the new regulations, as the diagonal floor cutout removes some of the aerodynamic tools it has been using over the last few years to create that seal. But all teams have been regularly using fully enclosed holes that stretch almost the entire length of the floor, rather than just in the section ahead of the rear tyre, to make gains in this area too. These longitudinal holes, which we must remember are now banned for 2021, are used as a way to seal the edge of the entire floor, and not just the rear section and diffuser. This means the floor becomes an extension of the diffuser, and this is where we begin to cross over into Mercedes territory. As we've already established, Red Bull's high rate potentially increases the volume of its diffuser due to the increased ground clearance, whereas Mercedes' reduced rake tied to its longer wheelbase gives it more floor space to create that volume in the area ahead of the diffuser, without compromising too much on the stability of the airflow under the floor. Although initially problematic with that ethos, Mercedes ironed out some of those issues to turn into the powerhouse team we know today. The introduction of these new regulations will test that resolve, and having lost a chunk of the floor, the team will be hard at work to recover the downforce lost. So in the end, could both Mercedes and Red Bull lose out? 
If you look at it objectively, it seems that both short wheelbase high rake and long wheelbase low rake velocities are going to take a hit. In essence, if it affects them equally, then it will likely do so for everybody, and simply peg everyone back as the regulations intended. But how much it will affect each team will depend on their reliance on the departing holes and the slots on the floor and the diffuser, when compared with the losses they'll initially get from the trimming down of the floor, brake ducts and diffuser. While 10% was the FIA's target, it's not a figure that will be representative for every team. The same can be said if you take each change in isolation, with the brake duct winglets being trimmed back likely to hurt one team more than another two. Right now there's not exactly a clear answer as to who comes off worse, but there seems to be no doubt it's going to have an impact. But what will the designs look like? There have been a collection of 2021 style floors tested in practice already, with some similar approaches already seen. Haas, Ferrari and Renault have trialled small curls on the trailing edge corner of the floor, perhaps attempting to bring airflow in and around the rear tyre and work it internally. The Ferrari also tried an array of fins at Abu Dhabi instead of that curl to explore that effect further, taking the air that drifts outwards and turning it inside. With that, perhaps there's scope to run a vortex along the outer diffuser fences and create a seal, but it's interesting not to see too much of a consensus in designs, at least not at this stage. Although the 2020 formula is largely carry forward for yet another year, there's no reason to expect that the teams will fall entirely in the same order. But the key decision throughout the year will not be which designs to pursue, but when to stop. Putting all your eggs in the 2021 basket might do well for a year, but being underprepared for 2022 and F1's future may mean you're left in the dust. Getting a head start for next year and beyond will be a far more lucrative long-term strategy, and it will be interesting when we'll start to see development into 2022's designs.